Dear sir, your 52-week movie challenge particularly reeks of amateurish talent. Your intros are bloated and cringe, and your production values just as shallow as your insights. I have never heard of my fair lady, and I quite frankly will never watch anything that isn't a superhero or Disney film. <laughs> Yours truly, Sir Channington Regina, PhD. P.S. Instead of watching films you've never seen from a long list and making videos about them, stick to the ones people are already talking about. Dear editor, as a solidary voter, I take offense in your former episode where you accused the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences of favoritism of the most shameless caliber. Many of my dearest Oscar voting friends have voted for Lala Land, let alone seen it. Yours faithfully, Paul Dawson, Esquire. P.S. I have never kissed Meryl Streep's casting agent. There are films that are so ahead of their time that they're timeless, and it shows how revolutionary these filmmakers are with their craft. When it comes to films about TV, Network takes off into greatness, and all that is thanks to one killer pilot. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh, your opinion, man. Network is the 1976 satirical drama directed by Sidney Lumet. It tells the story of UBS, the United Broadcasting System, a cable news network completely devoted to ratings by any means necessary. When their top anchor, Howard Beale, played by the late Peter Finch, declares his suicide on public television, the execs fire him on the spot. The network VP, however, played by Faye Dunaway, insists on making a TV show surrounding Beale, as his ravings catapult the network's ratings all the way to the top. What follows is a web of insanity that holds it all together like the network's president, where William Holden plays a news veteran who's conflicted with his infatuations with the VP's cutthroat ambitions, his wife, played by Beatrice Strait, as well as his integrity, and recruiting domestic terrorists for inspiration of new programming. If there's one thing you should know about me, is that I love 70s cinema. The era of the great director. Masters like Martin Scorsese, Francis Ford Coppola, George Lucas, to name a few, and of course Steven Spielberg were responsible for bringing the directorial power of cinema into the mainstream. So where does network lie? For myself, it was very entertaining because it has a lot going for it. I can wholeheartedly say that network has the best acting from an ensemble cast I have ever seen. The main cast from Peter Finch to Beatrice Strait are all consistently remarkable. While the only Lumet film I've seen from him was 12 Angry Men, a masterpiece still worth watching if you haven't already, what I already adore about his direction is his attention to detail with cast. Sticking to discussing network, Going beyond getting the best performances from his actors, Lumet both gives all of his actors something to do while also paying lush attention to detail to the camaraderie of everyone acting together. Just look at this scene. Go down to the mailroom. As of this minute, over 14,000 telegrams. The response is sensational. Herb telling. Mac Herb's phone hasn't stopped ringing. Every goddamn affiliate from Albuquerque to Sandusky. The response is sensational. Yes. All right. You, Herb. Get back to your office. Moldanian called me, Joe Donnelly called me, we got a goddamn hit, goddamn it, Diner Show in the Times. We even got an editorial in the holy goddamn New York Times, a call to morality. I don't know where he that is. That crazy son of a bitch Beale has caught on, so don't tell me you don't know where he is. He could be jumping off a roof for all I know. The man is insane, he's not responsible for himself. He needs care and treatment. And all you grave robbers think about is that he's, I hit. You know, Max, it's just possible that he isn't insane. That he is, in fact, imbued with some special spirit. My God, I'm supposed to be the romantic. You're supposed to be the hard-bitten realist. Lumet wastes not a single actor's talent. Everyone feels like they have a unique place in moving the scene forward. In fact, while I was doing research, I realized that Network had no score to this film. That's how good the acting was. I was so laser-focused on the characters that the thought didn't occur to me that there was even a score to begin with. It's not a review of Network without mentioning Peter Chayefsky's legendary screenplay, widely considered one of the greatest ever written. Yes, all all the characters are tightly idiosyncratic. The plot and the pacing are dynamic and methodical. Its timely themes of forcing politically correct propaganda over fair and accountable journalism, something that could never happen today, are both keenly executed and seethingly biting. 
But what, I asked myself, puts it amongst the upper echelons of screenplays? After putting together a list of films I consider to have the best screenplays ever written to a film, I then looked for the common strength. Screenplays to films like Rashomon, Pan's Labyrinth, and Magnolia, just to name a few. These examples tell their stories in widely different ways, such as coining its own phenomena, a multi-layered hero's journey, and an epic ensemble drama. It was then I finally found it out. A perfect balance between the literary and the cinematic. It succeeds in upholding the foundations of a good story, but it also leaves it open for the cinematic medium. In the case for Network, all the praise I gave the film is something that's expected from a great book if not a great play. At the same time, it's neither too wordy, bloated, or even stagey. It lends just enough to a directorial vision to make it a great film. Chayefsky's script reads well, but all of the performances make that voice leap off the page. On top of that, the theatrical synergy of Lumet's direction through his actors gives Chayefsky's voice a sense of loony urgency. Not to mention its chilling camera angles enliven the latter's language with such a cheeky atmosphere. As far as its flaws are concerned, Network does have a major one. What keeps this intelligent and compelling film fairly below a masterpiece is that some of its tonal shifts feel off, particularly with the arc of Holden's character Schumacher. On a side note, I understand that a director like Bong Joon-ho can get away and succeed with sudden tonal shifts. That's because when he does go for it, it feels like an exciting departure from expectations rather than a jarring transition. But I digress. Compared to the delightful insanity of the film's Howard Beale show, the dark humor in Schumacher's arc runs a bit too dry. He's clearly the most tragic comic character of the cast as he tries to preserve his integrity amid the changing world of journalism. I just wish that its morbid sense of humor lived up to its pathos. There's also a subplot with a terrorist organization that's nowhere near as funny as it comes across. I get what they're trying to say about infotainment, but their screen time is too minimal and I think a greater presence would have made them a lot funnier. Overall though, Network is an exceptionally conceived film that moves at such a magnetic pace that there are rarely less than intriguing moments. While its solid presentation doesn't always live up to its topically transgressive themes, the cast and direction constantly elevate Network into such an engrossing satire. While I'm disappointed that films like these aren't made today, the fact that this film even exists and it still goes around film circles speaks to the populist power power of its raging satire. In the words of the great Roger Ebert, I can see its flaws more easily, but I can also understand why it moved me so deeply, and why the greatness of some films depends not on their perfection or logic, but on their heart. On a scale of 1 to 10, that work is definitely... Outrageously topical. So what's your take on Network? Have you seen it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, what's the most well-written film you've ever seen? Hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you'll know when I post my future videos. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at FilmGeekDave. That's all for today and I'll see you next time when my Academy Award Marathon continues with a review of a winner of the Best Cinematography Oscar. <laughs> Eine Frechheit ist das, mitten in der Nacht zu einem Krawall zu machen.